Good morning and welcome to worship at St. John's. We are glad that you are here in worship with us today as we celebrate the missions of St. John's. We ask that everyone signs the registry found at the end of each pew and pass it to your neighbors so that we can greet each other by name. If you are worshiping with us online, please record your attendance in the form listed in the description of the video. We are continuing with one of our connect groups over the summer. Brews and Cues will continue to meet. This Wednesday, join us at 6 p.m. at Slow Play for fellowship and conversation. We continue to celebrate the success of the barbecue last Saturday. It was a wonderful time as we raised together $8,500, which means that Lifehouse Women's Shelter and Family Promise will each receive $4,250. Thank you to our volunteers, sponsors, and to those of you who purchased the delicious barbecue. Percy is looking forward to next year. Do you like computers? Might you be interested in our audio video equipment? Are you passionate about our church's outreach on social media? If so, you are invited to join our audiovisual team. We are currently looking to expand our AV team to enhance our 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. worship services. Training sessions and mentoring are available until you feel comfortable with the equipment. This is a great opportunity for youth to receive service hours for school requirements. Interested individuals can reach out to a staff person for more information. Next Sunday is Pentecost. Join us in celebrating the church by wearing flame colors, so red, orange, yellows, blues. Show up in your best and brightest colors as we celebrate the birthday of the church together. You received an email this week from SPRC, and after considerable prayer and reflection, Pastor David has decided to apply for long-term disability effective July 1st. He appreciates the time St. John's has given him as he and Donna have walked this difficult road. Pastor David will preach one more time at St. John's. He will preach the 11 a.m. service on Sunday, June 19th, Father's Day. We send our prayers to Pastor David and Donna as they begin this new life journey. Pastor David spent 39 years in church ministry at the South Carolina Conference and we celebrate with him his accomplishments and offer him peace in retirement. As we say goodbye and wish Pastor Surrett well, St. John's will welcome Reverend Neil Young, who will serve through June of 2023. We are excited and looking forward to welcoming Pastor Young into the St. John's family. Pastor Young and his wife Imogene will be arriving prior to July 1st, he has served the South Carolina Conference for 44 years. His last appointment was for 15 years at St. Andrews by the Sea. Please look for more information about ways to welcome the Youngs to our congregation. As you can see, we have a lot going on this summer, and you are going to hear more as our service continues. Read your Touch Base Tuesday emails, and for more information, scan the QR code in your bulletin. Let us continue in worship together.
Would you please rise in body or in spirit for our call to worship? Only the hungry search for bread. Only the thirsty look for water. This is a place for those who are hungry and thirsty in spirit. Only those who ache for meaning will pursue it. Only those who yearn for a deeper life, life will seek it. This is a place for those who ache and yearn for something more. So let us come here today with our hunger and thirst our unsatisfied longings, our heartfelt yearnings, and let the God of life satisfy our soul.
As we remain standing, let us say together our affirmation for Easter as found in your bulletin. We believe in an amazing God who surprises us on Easter morning, who has the last word on death, who never gives up loving and working for good, who weeps at our Good Fridays and transforms our tears into hallelujahs. We believe in the risen Christ, not stuck in a tomb of despair, nailed to a dead-end future, nor buried in the past, but alive and willing to walk with us on the ups and downs of our journey. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the invisible presence, the divine wind of joy, hope, and possibility. We believe in the Spirit creates a community of compassion, justice, and welcome, so that the whole world may be filled with wonder and hope. We believe we are to live as an Easter people, grinning with hope, contagious with joy, and boundless in love. As you're able, please remain standing for the reading of the gospel lesson from the book of John. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you as an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks. So in Jesus Christ, we know God's forgiveness and peace. Let us share that peace with one another. We pass the peace. I'd like to invite the children to come forward to join me. Good morning. Happy Sunday. How is everybody today? Can I see your shoes? What kind of shoes do you have on? We have some tennis shoes, some flip-flops, some Crocs. Those are some good shoes. I like all those. Hey, I have a question. When would be a good time to wear tennis shoes? When you're running or when you're exercising, when you're riding something like your bike, don't want to scrape your toes, going on walks. Yep, it's a good time. I wore my tennis shoes today, running up the stairs. Feels good to have these comfortable shoes on. I've been thinking about the shoes that Jesus wore. Did he wear tennis shoes? Sandals. He had on sandals. This was Jesus' time was before they had invented rubber. And what did the streets look like in Jesus' time? Sandy, rocks, stones, dirty. So Jesus was wearing open shoes, and he was walking on rocks. So what do you think at the end of the day Jesus and the disciples' feet look like? 
You think they were a little dirty? Maybe they had some blisters. Maybe some good, good reasoning there. So we heard in the scripture lesson that Jesus took the disciples' feet and he washed them. Do you think that this was something that Jesus normally did? No, this was something new. And some of the disciples didn't think that Jesus should wash their feet because they thought that Jesus was above them. But Jesus took the disciples' feet and washed them to show the disciples how much Jesus loved them and that he was not above them but wanted to serve them. How can we serve other people? Do you always listen to what you're supposed to do? Always do that. Nope. <laughs> Sometimes. Well, this week, do you think you could put extra effort into when somebody asks you to help them do something, maybe around the house, you could do it a little bit more? Good, good. Will you pray with me? Dear God, use our hands and feet to serve you, to bring your light, into the world. Amen. All right, you can come with me to Children's Church. Thank you, Emily and children. Um, this morning, before we enter in our time of prayer, I would ask you to do something for me. Uh, at the end of your pews, on the center <laughs> aisle, are our Fellowship of Ritual Friendship tea pads. If you will take the opportunity to fill those out with your name, any contact information, if you're a member, a visitor, first-time visitor, or what, if you will take that opportunity to pass those around and down your aisle, and then back to the center aisle, we do that so that we may know who else is on your aisle, that you may be able to greet them by name, or at least a friendly smile and a handshake saying welcome to St. John's this morning. Um, but, and more so as we are um, entering this time right before our morning prayers, I would also direct your attention to your bulletin. There you will find on the back side of your bulletin our prayer list. Our prayer list of members of our congregation that need and would covet your prayers. Those that are in our nursing home and retirement community and an expectant set of parents down there as well. So if you will direct your attention to those uh, names to be mindful of those that we need to pray for. We also would lift up especially our senior pastor David and Donna, his wife, as they are preparing to head toward retirement in just a few short weeks. We want to lift him up as well as our incoming uh, senior pastor, Reverend Neil Young, who will be arriving late June, early July. So keep both the Surrett family and the Young family in our prayers. Also today uh, is a day in which we are saying goodbye to our sound tech, Brian Drescher. Many of you do not see him, but he's a young man right up there uh, in the sound booth. He's waving at you right now. Brian has been leading our AV ministry for these past 10 months and is embarking on new pathways. Uh, he still is going to be in town, but uh, he is embarking on a new pathway and will be stepping down and away from that um, weekly duty. So we obviously want to say thank you, Brian, for the past 10 months and helping us move forward. And as also Emily uh, announced earlier, if any of you have a propensity for things that deal with computers or cameras or audio visual things, uh, please let us know. There is uh, a QR code with a lot of information um, about weekly announcements in your bulletin. Tap on that. Um, and for those of you that are parents of bright, engaging, tech-savvy teenagers, uh, as Emily also lifted up, for those uh, high schoolers particularly, uh, service hours are available for this ministry. We'll be talking more about that in the coming weeks as we look to expand and fill out the space of our AV ministry. Will you pray with me? You, O oh gracious God, who calls us beloved, we bring hurting hearts to you this morning. 
our fearfulness and our worry, even our anger, O oh God. For our world is not as it should be. The ones with power make decisions for their own benefit. In the show of might, they flirt with war and destruction. But the most desperate among us are left to fend for themselves, like our sisters and brothers in Ukraine. The proud and the comfortable say, everything is fine, there is no problem. But those without privilege know better. They hunger, they weep, they bleed. Like our sisters and brothers, sons and daughters in Buffalo, in the Laguna Beach, and the 21 precious lives taken in Uvalde, Texas. They wait for your justice to vindicate them, O oh Lord, before it's too late. In a world where hate is a virtue and exclusion a way of life, O oh God, it's hard to hold on to what unites. It's tough to find common ground. Our humanity it's lost in the scuffle. But those of us who wish for peace forget how to make it or where to begin and fall into hopelessness, cynicism, or despair. We too begin to feel powerless in the face of widespread suffering and systematic evil. Even our planet, oh God, seems ready to crack. Crack under the pressure of forces that are beyond us. Earthquakes, hurricanes, wildfires, erupting volcanoes. Nature groans, oh God, and with it, so do your people. Come, Lord Jesus, we pray. When will you come? When will you make right? We are not strong enough, nor wise enough, not good enough to make peace, to bring healing. But you, O oh God, you are. You are the one who planted peace in our hearts. You are the one who will make it come to pass. Come, Lord Jesus. Strengthen the bruised reeds. Turn weapons into plowshares. Comfort the weary and heavy laden. Make a home for the homeless. Still the calm waters. Calm the storm. Come, Lord Jesus, you and your kingdom. Come, Lord Jesus, into this place at this very time. Remind us that we are not alone and teach us, O oh Lord, teach us once again as you taught your disciples as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Following the ascension of Christ, the 11 remaining apostles decided to replace Judas, who had died after betraying Christ to the Romans. Two able noble men were identified, Barabbas and Matthias. They prayed for God to show them which of the two God wished to have working for him in mission. We also prayed for guidance, especially over big decisions. Praying for guidance and making decisions is the essence of Christian stewardship. 
Our tithes and our offerings are, are our response to God's guidance in our lives. So we invite you to make your financial gift now by donating digitally using the QR code in your bulletin, using PayPal on the church app, or check, or by placing your gifts in the plates as they are passed this morning. Let us receive our morning offering as the ushers come forward.
Let us pray. Knower of our hearts and minds, please accept these gifts and use them for ministry in your world. We offer them freely for ministries of St. John's and those of our denomination through our mission and service. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for having me here today. I am uh, excited to be here to share a message with you. My name is Katie Myers. I'm the Domestic Programs Manager of Samaritan's Feet International. Uh, I bring greetings from our whole organization um, to you this morning, and we are excited to be um, planning a, an exciting several events with St. John's this summer. Um, Samaritan's Feet is a 501c3 humanitarian aid organization. As you might guess from our name, um, we are biblically based and were founded um, on the, the message that was read earlier today from the Gospel of John. Um, our founder, Manny Ahome, was a child growing up in Nigeria. He did not have a pair of shoes until he was nine years old, um, which is probably not unusual in Lagos, Nigeria. He was very poor. Um, his family had to work for everything they had, very hard, um, you know, just typical third world nation growing up. Until one day when a missionary from Wisconsin named Dave came to visit his village, and there was a contest, something about throwing a ball into a basket. All the kids in Lagos were confused because they had never known what to do with a ball besides kick it around. Um, soccer was the, well, football was the national game where he lived. Well, lo and behold, Manny would tell you that the guardian angels guided his ball into the basket that day, and Manny won his first pair of shoes at age nine. Ran home to tell his mom what he had won at this contest, was very excited. What he forgot to tell his mom was that he had set down the basket of water that he was supposed to be selling to raise money for the family in the park, and he left his water in the park. So he got a good tongue lashing when he got home that day. But Manny saw the opportunity that those shoes presented him. And so he used that pair of shoes to learn how to play the game of basketball. He was able to earn a scholarship to um, a university in the US. He earned his bachelor's degree. He earned an advanced degree and was basically living the, Amer living the American dream 
in the software and supply chain world, uh, I think we can all agree that we have learned how important supply chain and logistics are in these past couple of years. So Manny was living the high life, pretty much. He had met his wife, Tracy. They were beginning their family. They now have four adult children who are heavily involved with Samaritan Speed as well. Uh, but that back there at the beginning, um, like I say, he and Tracy were kind of living the American dream. Then he had to go back to Nigeria for his fa father's funeral. When he went back to that same park where he'd won his first pair of shoes so many years before, he noticed that there are still kids running around with no shoes on. Um, like Emily alluded to with the children this morning, running around in a, you know, with no shoes in an area where there's not good sanitation, where there's rocks, glass, brambles that you can cut your feet on, lack of shoes can literally be a death sentence. Um, I'm here to talk to you about the domestic side of Samaritan's feet. There is another whole international side that addresses foot-borne disease, um, protection, things like that. But I'm here to tell you about the domestic side. So Manny came home from uh, his father's funeral with the inkling that maybe it was up to him to do something about providing shoes for all these children who were running around with no shoes. And in 2003, Samaritan's Feet was founded. We have been around, as you can do the math, for nearly 20 years. In those 20 years, we have given um, 8.7 million pairs of shoes to people around the globe. Uh, a lot of those are croc style shoes or slides that you might see, um, you know, like soccer slides um, that go internationally in containers. We send those 15,000 pairs of shoes at a time. But again, my focus is domestic. And most of our um, domestic shoe distributions are done um, all around the country. We do a lot in schools. We partner with churches. We partner with corporations. We serve homeless people, we serve families in shelters, so we are really giving shoes to people all over the country in whatever state of need. We have a brand new um, program called Samaritan's Feet Seniors, where we are now serving senior citizens with specially designed shoes. They have a skid-proof, slip-proof um, sole. They are Velcro closure, very lightweight, so much better for seniors to use. We're, we're trying to protect our seniors so that they can continue um, living and serving with us. Um, as I mentioned, St. John's is going to be doing some exciting activations with us, engagements with us later on this summer. A um, couple of things here off-site that you'll, the children will do here. We'll have some groups coming to our warehouse in Charlotte, um, and then the big culmination will be an actual shoe distribution right here at St. John's on uh, the Sunday at the end of Vacation Bible School. Um, when we give shoes to people in need, pre-COVID, <laughs> we've adapted like everybody else has, um, we would wash the feet of the people who were receiving our shoes. And it's one thing to give a pair of shoes. It's one thing to meet that physical need. Uh, if you serve at this distribution, you will see children who are wearing the wrong size shoes who are wearing their sister's shoes, who are wearing hand-me-downs, who are wearing worn-out shoes, taped-together shoes. So we'll provide them with a brand-new pair of sneakers, brand-new pair of socks, nice clean feet because we're washing them. But when you have that opportunity to wash a child's feet, to look them in the eye and tell them that they are loved, that they are worth it, that they are worthy of dignity, you will change that child's life. And so I invite you to become involved with Samaritan's Feet, either through the St. John's activations or go find us online. We have a million different ways to get involved with us. Um, not all are financial gifts. There are ways to do things at your home. There's ways, ways to do things in the community. There are ways to do things at our headquarters. And I invite you to find out what you can about Samaritan's Feet. We are excited. We're grateful. Um, Emily has been so creative and energetic and has really been encouraging to us to make this whole full wraparound event happen. So we are thankful for your support. Thanks. Thank you, Katie. I just want to kind of tell you a little bit about how this all came to be and how we got this partnership together. When the Children's Council met this year and we talked about what summer would look like, 
We went through all the ideas of the traditional vacation Bible school. Do we do an evening time? What is it going to look like? And what we decided is that we really wanted to show our children what mission work looked like, that we wanted to work alongside our little ones and be the hands and feet of Jesus. And that is where this whole idea came from, that we would show our children after years of being apart from COVID what it looked like to work together as a church. And so the idea from Samaritan's Feet came from a children's council member who had participated with them, and it just grew. So on Friday, July 22nd, we will have a meal together to kick off our time and enjoy some fellowship together. Saturday morning, July 23rd, we will send a group to the distribution warehouse, and we will have a group here where we will make the hope totes make cards that go in each of the boxes for the children. And then, like Katie alluded, on the 23rd, we will have an active worship service where we will be the hands and feet and provide these shoes for the children. I think this is a wonderful way to actively show and lead our children by example, and I hope that you all will participate in this with us. I'm excited. There are going to be lots of things that you'll see coming forward. You can see I repurposed our angel tree. <laughs> I have seen big gifts that you have brought in through that angel tree in um, December, and I look forward to seeing all the shoes that will come in over these next few months um, from that angel tree again. You are St. John's. You always show up, and I cannot wait to spend this time in fellowship and in mission with you over these next few months as we work towards this goal of outfitting 200 children with shoes. Thank you.
So may the blessing of the God who calls the people out of Egypt, calls us out from our comfort and our safety to embrace a, embrace a journey of challenge and risk. May the blessing of the Son who kneels and washes our feet, call us out from our comfort and our safety to embrace and serve those we meet on the journey. May the blessing of the Spirit who weaves dreams of a new community call us from our comfort and our safety to provide welcome and hospitality to strangers as well as friends. Go in peace with the love of God. <laughs>